Welcome to Road Atlanta, everybody. Let's have a clean race up. This is the card, this is the track, and this is just in case anyone's hungry, $2 on Facebook Marketplace. So race number one, starting in P3 with a 21.2. This is the last video at Road Atlanta. We are car number five here, so I would be pretty happy with a with a uh, podium position finish if we were to continue on this path. However, we are already under pressure from the guy who started in P4, that's Travis Peterson. He's on the outside of us, two wide by two, and just a little, the tiniest contact, like, it's very small contact, totally unsettles my car, and sadly losing a bit of time, definitely seeding uh, P3 for sure, and everybody is queued up behind me. I don't have the speed. I'm going to end up going too wide on the outside for this initial corner, and I'm not able to stay alongside with that guy. It looks like somebody else is going to follow him through. I'm just trying to stay safe here, and down into, I think we're in, down into P6, so funneling back pretty quickly. Uh, going to try and stop the bleeding at this point, coming out of the S's, and hopefully we can settle behind Blue. Luke, very fast driver, uh, Luke is, so I, I feel confident that Luke will probably move up if I could follow that wave, you know, definitely opportunity to move forward. He's blinking in and out a little bit, but um, yeah, that's just eye racing. For those of you who do eye racing, you probably see that a lot. Probably scares you a bit on your first few times seeing somebody uh, defy the laws of time and space, but uh, I'm pretty used to it at this point. Lap number two, coming across the line for turn one. We've dropped slightly to Luke, gonna try and close that gap up coming through turn one. Ellis behind, similar gap towards him. Looks like some potential fighting up ahead. Luke is looking for a move up the inside of Brian, who had a rough run through the first corner. He's gonna get that done. We are now on the tail of Brian. He's getting a little bit unsettled. We are going to head through the S's really close together. I end up backing off just slightly here. I really want to prioritize a good exit out of the S's and hoping that I can get a position that way. It was solid, could have been better. It looks like a small bit of wiggle from Brian and even from Luke up ahead. Brian is now side by side. I'm gonna try and navigate this correctly, see who's going where, who should I follow through. And it looks like it's gonna be Luke. I try and tuck up the inside, get slightly unsettled. Very light contact with Brian and totally destroy my run onto the uh, straight there. I, I got loose completely. And, really just lost my own grip of the car. End up getting passed by Lightning McQueen and the Caterpillar car, and we've got a guy behind us who is rocking the same livery as Luke, so I'm in this strange little pack now. Luke is side by side with Brian up ahead. They're one behind the other on my right side. I am on the inside. I'm actually now defending Scott Kessel on the inside into the chicane. Two by two by two. Look at this. Uh, now, okay, granted, I totally end up in the back here with the shit end of the stick. But everybody survives that, and surviving a two by two by two situation, uh, if you're an avid eye racer, doesn't happen all the time. Great driving from everybody involved here to settle into a single file line somehow. Look at that, immediately settling in. So really, really great racing from everybody involved. On to lap number three, a lot of a lot has happened so far. We're down into P9, so we're down six positions since the start of this race, faking a move up the inside of Scott, and uh, we're just gonna th completely throw ourselves off of our own line with that. Scott actually still gets a really good run through there, so backing off of him a little bit at this point, and Charles behind is actually only three tenths behind us at this point, so if we do any more dumb moves like that, we could introduce him into this battle and uh, put ourselves under pressure. Gonna try and not do that. The next move I make, it needs to be one that sticks, or uh, I need to let these guys fight and try and navigate a way through with um, minimal time loss for myself. Skipping ahead to lap number four, the group is still all together. Up at the front, this is the guy in P3, and he is going to completely lose it through turn one, run into the wall, and that will probably be damaged. So we move up a position up into P8 now, still following behind these guys. We've dropped Charles behind by about half of a second over the course of the last lap, and it seems like that gap is growing as well. Down the S's for the fourth time, and it looks like the guys in P1 and P2 have pretty much vanished from sight at this point. It is, uh, I think the front of this group is P3, so that's our goal at the moment. Lap five, this is uh, turn one of lap five. We are approaching really good run onto Scott ahead of us. And we have the slipstream tucking to the inside early to let him know that we are looking for that move. Up the inside we go, over slow and then over throttle and uh, too much steering at the same time. Loses us one, two positions. Here comes three, four, and uh, five positions. <laughs> Uh, six positions so down into p14 now and just about 
everything has gone wrong that could have. That one was completely on me. I just was a bit too aggressive with all of my inputs from start to finish through turn one right there, so can't be upset about that. We do get a good run out of the S's, looking to immediately make a move back onto Jerome, who just got past us, up the inside, the corner, heading onto the corner, onto the straight, towards the back of the track, and we are going to just barely make contact. Uh, I think there was space there for him, though. I don't think uh, anybody was upset about that one, and thankfully, we were able to put ourselves ahead of him. There is a large, or well, not a large, but there's a few cars behind, so moving backwards anymore would suck, and, um, He's in a pretty good spot here, Jerome, to look for a move. Soaking up Slipstream, moving to the outside for the chicane. We're going to have to put on some defense if we want to keep this position. He is a bit ahead of us going into the chicane, but we're going to break late, go all of the way through the track, and had he tried to turn in there, he probably would have died as I absolutely shipped that through. He does not, though. He stays behind, and I'm able to defend that position. So maintaining P14, baby, let's go. Uh, crossing on to lap number six now. And Jerome is still hunting for this position back. And I mean, to be fair to him, he's in a very good place too. Everybody here about within like less than a second, these four cars. He has a good run. He's going to end up backing off there though, not looking to make anything too aggressive. Uh, and I've driven quite a bit with Jerome. He's not a super aggressive driver from my experience. So I'm not super worried about him doing something there. And him backing off will actually end up kind of giving me probably a little bit more space than he was intending for. So I feel extremely safe. I'm just pushing all of the way through the S's. And uh, to my surprise, looking in my rear view as we exit the S's, Jerome is going to take a bit too much of the inside curb. Car slides out. Both of the cars go around him now. And um, that will remove a lot of pressure from us. They actually begin to fight now behind me for P15. Up the inside, I think this is car number 13. And uh, the pig car is going to hold it around the outside, just about looking for a good run onto the straight. A bit deep from the car on the outside and a bit shallow from the car on the inside so they're gonna have similar runs all of this is continuing to let me pull away and the picky car is going to move into p15 jerome is coming up behind so now it's a three horse battle for p15 and jerome has a really good run superior to theirs plus the slipstream he is now right behind the picky car who's leading looking to defend this on the outside of the chicane and it looks like it's gonna work for him 13 looking for a move up the inside 19 defending very well around the outside turns into the inside for the end of that chicane jerome getting a really good run out of the second part of that chicane and he is now side by side with car number 13 as they cross onto lap number seven. Uh, car number 19 now significantly ahead in P15, and it looks like Jerome might not be able to make this work. He's a little bit behind on the inside going into turn one. Ooh, a little bit of contact, and it's going to set him back, but uh, everybody is safe through there, and they finally end up settling uh, into a row here. Now, all of that fighting has just completely allowed me the world and more behind me. I have no pressure eyes are ahead. I have a lot of work to do here. We're seven laps in, so we've got, what, 10 laps left? Is that right? 12 laps left? I can't count. And we have 1.8 seconds to Sergey ahead of us. By the time lap number nine comes around, this is Scott from earlier, car number 16. As he makes his way through the S's, I think he might have, like, overheated tires slightly, maybe a little bit too much steering initially there, and it's going to completely unsettle the car, jump the curb, sliding out, and that will most likely give him a slowdown as well, as it looks like he's going to drive across the track. We are catching up to Sergey now. We have just a, just about a second to him, picking up the position from um, that guy as Sergey's bumper goes flying into the air. And it's looking like the three ahead of me might end up in a battle. By the time lap number 10 comes around, they're all within seven tenths of each other. Sergey is just a couple of tenths behind Wiley ahead of him. So really hoping that something could pop off here, some sort of fighting through the beginning of the S's. And they don't take the best lines, neither of them. That's going to let me catch up by a couple of tenths, which doesn't seem like much. But you chip away a couple of tenths here, a couple of tenths there. I mean, really, you only need to do that once or twice a lap. And over the course of five or six laps, you're going to be right on their tail, and we have nine laps left to go, so a lot of opportunity still. Four tenths behind Sergey as we head towards the straight, and by the time we get onto it, we are less than a second to Wiley now, who's in P10, so we are making up positions. We're up into P12 now at this point, and thankfully, uh, even though we had all of these accidents, like P3 to P10, was they were all so close together in like such a big pack. I think it was actually like two separate packs, but of multiple people. And that has allowed us to make up so much time just by driving some clean laps. Our lap times haven't been amazing, but I'm pretty sure they've just about all been within the 21s apart from uh, the ones including our accidents, which is good. The, the little bit of fighting that has occurred ahead of us has lended itself to people driving some 22s or some high 21s, which has given us about a 
three to four tenths margin on a lot of laps and allowed us to catch up to the entirety of the pack. Now directly behind Sergey and Scott behind who rejoined after that um, incident he had earlier will slide out again almost in the same spot just about a corner earlier than before so that will relieve the little pressure that was behind us. I honestly didn't even realize he was behind us at this point. Chasing down Sergey here we get a good run we're two tenths behind him and at this point he's kind of holding us up we're losing time to P10 and P9 gonna try and get past him as soon as we can this straight looks like a prime opportunity unfortunately we push way too early they are pushing the car out wide and completely destroying our possibility of a run there uh, lap number 12 this is P3. This is Luke Mann, the guy we were behind earlier, who's worked his way up into P3. That's all about to change for him as he goes sliding through the first corner, similar, similar to Travis earlier and similar uh, to what happened to me when I tried to make that move. He is able to rejoin the track, albeit with damage. In the race, I wasn't actually able to see him. I just saw that smoke in the, uh, the tracks off of the track, so I knew that somebody had wrecked. I didn't know if I picked up a position, but I knew that at the very least it would, it should slow down somebody else or let a faster driver come further back and then hopefully he'll fight his way through. He's actually, you can see him up the road. He's just coming out of the S's. So I think we're pretty close to finishing in a top five position if we could make this work for ourselves. Great run out of the S's. And it looks like this may be our opportunity to get around Sergey into the corner before the corner leading onto the straight. We swing around the outside. Sergey completely backs out, does not want anything to do with that. And we are now focused on chasing Chasing down P10 Wiley ahead of us, who is chasing down Jose. Only a couple of tenths behind Jose he is, so he's going to have a really good run, most likely, soaking up the slipstream from that close. Sergey is right on our tail as well, but he is actually just going to stay behind us. The car behind Luke, who uh, just rejoined the track after that incident on turn one, going to break extremely lightly, run into the back of Luke, really only damage himself, and rejoin the track as we go through the chicane we're able to get around him though so no i mean good rejoin from him he did stop on the inside there uh, which is the racing line but i mean it's better than just driving across the track so that will be another position and as we cross onto lap number 13 we are now up into p10 so looking to make a couple of more moves up possibly i think that the fight that's been going on between jose and wiley should eventually yield something for us and coming down the s's on this lap it may just be the time on board with Wiley as he could be falling victim here to high tire pressure or um, dirty air, not quite sure, but either way, it's going to slow him down a ton and we are not willing to send it around the inside through the S's there. Fortunately, he completely loses it on the exit as well, so we do eventually get around him there. Gaining, we actually lose a little bit of time to Jose ahead of us, but uh, by the time lap number 15 comes around, we put in some solid laps and we are chasing him down, running low 21s, high 20s at this point which has kind of been my pace for most of this week. I've uh, only had a couple of races where I really stay in the 20s. I usually at least dip into the low 21s, maybe a mid 21 here or there a few times, uh, at least, at least. Through the S's, we are following Jose down. Up ahead, I'm keeping an eye on Luke and Jack, who are pretty close together as well, so potential for something to pop off there. Absolutely ship it on the exit of the S's there. Uh, managed to keep the car facing the right direction, but did get an off track for that. Teasing a move up the inside, not really looking for it there. Hoping to throw off his line onto the straight and uh, just kind of show up in his mirrors. He definitely misses his run or misses the apex on his run onto the straight. And we are now one tenth behind him. We're soaking up slipstream. We had a good run as well. This should be an easy move for us. Moving to the inside and holding him there. It's actually the outside for the bottom of the hill, but the inside for this next corner. And he's actually gonna end up, looks like he made, not quite. He's gonna break a little bit early and give it up. Uh, I was a bit worried that he would ship it down the inside there. Not worried, but, uh, but ready to. I was, um, I was preparing for him to send it up the inside. So this is the penultimate lap. We are two seconds behind Jack and Luke. Quite a bit of time to make up with only two laps remaining. And I'm really not expecting to have anything happen for me at this point. But uh, Luke having a rough run on the top of the hill there. And it's going to allow a possibility for Jack to make something happen. They're just about making it too wide through the S's. And Luke is kind of having to semi-defend all of the way through here. And it doesn't seem like there's that much time loss going on for these guys but by the end of the straight we have caught up to them by just about over a second so did a lot for us there if that trend continues as we cross on to the last lap there's possibility for something to happen here our last lap unfortunately was not fantastic we ran a 22-6 on that one so had we had a better last lap 
we could really be uh, be in the running here. 21 flat on that one, though, so we are definitely back up to pace at this point. Jack potentially looking for a move up the inside. I think they make contact, and that's going to put us right on their tail as we get to the top of the hill, and uh, Jack goes a bit deep through there. It's probably going to slow down his line through this next part and allow Luke away, but it doesn't look like that's what happened. Luke going a bit deep through here. Jack trying to open it up more than him, looking for a better run. It's not going to really do much for you through the S's, though. You really want to focus on this run right here out of the S's, and uh, I mean, props to both of them. They made it work really well. We actually drop off slightly of both of them. We are just about in a prime spot to make something happen uh, down the down the straight though. So trying to stay within about three tenths here as we make this final run onto the straight. Very important. You get on the throttle early here. And I probably hesitated a little bit too much there. I had the angle. I don't know why I didn't just put my foot down. Uh, better safe than sorry, I suppose. Could have been in the wall there. Easy to spin out. And uh, two tenths behind Jack. However, he does have the slipstream from Luke who's three tenths ahead of him, so will a move happen there? I'm not quite sure. He's definitely gaining speed. It looks like Luke is holding the inside, and Jack going deep around the outside, potentially making it happen, but Luke, great defense. That may open up an opportunity for us to cut underneath Jack. There we are, and we're heading towards the final corner. We're on the inside of him. It's tough to make this happen. We gotta allow him space, taking the curb, and <laughs> contact as we cross the line in p8 we didn't quite get it done there we did run directly into the side of him for a dramatic finish we end uh, backwards on the track and this guy ends basically in the exact same fashion as us albeit no longer with a spoiler and that'll be the end of this race here are the results for what it was, I mean, it was a really fun race. It's one of those races, a lot of shit went wrong, but I really, really enjoyed it. So we didn't really gain much there. Uh, we lost a little bit, gained a little bit, whatever. We basically stayed in the same place, but I'm not upset about it. Now, this next race, this was my last race of the week, and uh, I wanna cover my qualifying run for this one. The previous time, a 21.2, not exactly where you wanna be if you're looking to start around the podium, which I am hoping to really shipping it through that first corner. It's about breaking as little as possible. You don't really need to open up the top of that hill all that much. You can use that inside curb for quite a bit of angle, and you can use the curbs here just slightly for angle as well. You can hook your tire over them, or you can just ride on top of them. Honestly, either of those work. Getting a good exit, sending it over the dirt, over the sand, and uh, headed towards the straight. Want to break very minimally here, very minimally. It, there's a lot of camber, a lot more camber than you think. I do ride the curb, which Honestly, I don't think that's optimal to ride that curb, but we're fucking shipping it, and the car is still facing the right direction, which is great. Just about getting an off-track there, but keeping it on. Um, yep, and then uh, just kind of full throttle all the way down here, slowly make my way across the track to the right side of the track to open up the chicane at the bottom of the hill. Breaking, I think I'm breaking just before, or just kind of, yeah, just before the 100 slowly onto the brakes. You don't want to use a ton of brakes there. Really abuse the track limits here. You can get all the way into the dirt with your inside tire through both of those. Getting onto the throttle, and you don't have to open this up all the way onto the curb. Unnecessary distance to travel. Cutting that inside curb, and bam! Across the line for a 20.56, which I was pretty happy with. That put us on P2, ahead of Alfie Butcher, who is a Haas driver uh, for F1 Esports, I believe it is. So, pretty cool to be ahead of Alfie. And then behind Alfie, we have a driver who's a, a pretty frequent driver on this channel, Owen I Isley, who is rocking a livery that I'm pretty sure that he made. Let's get underway. Lap number one, uh, Alfie immediately ahead of us. Immediately. No hesitation. He is ahead of us. We are just about under pressure from the car behind. He's going to end up tucking behind us, though. So moving down to P3 and Alfie up the inside of Ricardo as well. I don't think Ricardo... I think Ricardo wanted to let him by, honestly. He knows the uh, capabilities of Alfie, and that will show through this race. So... We are settled in here. We've got three tenths behind us and through the S's, already losing time to Ricardo up ahead of us. And honestly, that was basically the entire race. There was a little bit of switching positions behind me, but it wasn't really dramatic. So uh, here's our laps for that race. Consistent 21s. It, it definitely could have been a bit better, but uh, we are maintaining P3 and looking at the laps ahead of us. I mean, Alfie is 13 seconds ahead of us and they're running low 20s in the race. I really didn't stand a chance uh, at my current pace with these guys. So crossing the line in P3 for me, a pretty solid race. Just kind of drove that one out. No, uh, no real fighting going on there. But I want to cover some other stuff. Basically just lap one. This guy right here, car number 15, I think it is, or I don't know, car number 13. 
he, man, I, I, there's, okay, so he almost drives this guy off the track, and this guy rejoins, and <laughs> look at this, dude, it's that, it's like that picture of that girl on the couch, if you know what I'm talking about, um, that's what this made me think of, a terrible situation heading into turn one for everybody involved, and you don't have to be a genius to know that there's gonna be some death here, this guy gets hit from the front and behind as he tries to send it in between two people who are already, uh, three wide with somebody, so that was a interesting situation, Owen making it through just barely, but then getting spun by this guy behind who was looking to take advantage, runs into the guy on the inside, runs into Owen on the outside, takes out both of them, so four of those five cars died, I'm amazed any of them lived, to be honest. They, I'm pretty sure they all got incidents for that. Car number 20, uh, a couple of turns later, driving into the dirt outside of the S's, and he's going to end up going too wide with this guy. Never mind. He's going to lock up his tires, drive this guy off the track ahead of him, and uh, luckily the Red Bull car was able to continue driving, uh, facing the right way at the very least. Towards the end of the straight, this is still lap one, looking for a pretty almighty dive bomb here, completely behind this guy, but going for it regardless. Realizes he's not making it, gets on the throttle. Somebody else missed that as well. And as that was happening, Dean Winters, who if you've seen my other video, it's, it's that guy. Uh, he's in this race as well. They're too wide ahead of him, and he is going to take advantage regardless of if somebody is ahead of him, just driving right into the back of Thomas, putting him severely down the order and off of the track. Anyway, here are my results. P3 gained 76 I rating. Pretty crazy. Uh, most I've gained in a bit. These guys were way too fast. Their average lap time was my best lap time, and uh, we gained some safety rating as well. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see some more or support me, check out my channel and my other videos there, and I'm sure you will enjoy those as well.